Hello and welcome to this OpenSim Creator tutorial. I'm Adam, a developer on the project. In this tutorial, we're going to be going through tutorial one of the official OpenSim Creator documentation. To open that documentation, you can click here in the UI, which will open a browser window. And the one we're doing in this video is over here, one, make a pendulum, in which we're just going to be making a very simple pendulum uh, the reason I point out the written documentation is because if I'm going too quickly or too slowly, you might prefer to just quickly read through this documentation. Another point about the written documentation is that it's written in a long form for tutorials one and two especially, uh, because it's assumed that if you have never used OpenSim before, that needs to be explained. So you'll find that it has these big blocks here that explain how OpenSim specifically works, and you might find that useful if you've never used OpenSim before. In the video, I will explain some OpenSim concepts, uh, but maybe not quite as comprehensively as the written documentation does. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Uh, let me just check a copy of the documentation I have on my laptop over here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a new model. So I'm going to click over here to do that, but you can also click up here or click uh, Control N. Uh, and once you open your new model, you're presented with a blank scene that contains this frame geometry in the middle, uh, which is some decorative geometry that is decorating the ground, right? which is essentially zero, uh, the origin point of your model, and it doesn't move. Uh, the first thing we're going to be doing in this model is a section 1.3 in a tutorial, which is uh, to add your first body. So the body we're going to be adding is, and, and sorry, the way I did that was I clicked down here, uh, add body on the action bar. You may find that if you've, if you've played around with panels or you've disabled some panels, you need to re-enable this. So if you go up to window here, make sure actions is enabled and make sure that this panel is, is where you like it to be. I personally put it on the bottom here and I hide this bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add body over here. And uh, the body we're adding is called pendulum Base, and it's going to be the body that acts kind of as the ceiling in the scene. And I'm going to attach that to ground here with a weld joint. And that weld joint is going to be called Pendulum Base to Ground. And uh, we want to add some geometry to it. So I'm going to click here to attach. And we're not going to attach one of these uh, one of these mesh files. We'll just use generated geometry that opens some natively sports. And the one we're going to use is called brick, which is a, just a cube. If we add that in, then you'll see that the scene now has a brick in the middle of it. Uh, this brick isn't the body, it's just the um, decoration used to, to display the body and can be changed independently of the body's properties. Uh, and you'll notice that in the documentation, uh, there's an explanation about how uh, this geometry and, and the, these bodies are all attached to each other. But effectively, in terms of OpenSim, what's happened here is that we, if I go to the hierarchy here, I can show you, is that if you look at the body set, which is a set of bodies in your model, we've just added one called Pendulum Base. And if you look at the joint set, we've added a weld joint called Pendulum Base to Ground. And because uh, we had this tick box ticked in this uh, Add Body dialog, where it says uh, Add Offset Frames, that joint has already had these two offsets added. So it's had the ground offset and a pendulum base offset. Um, and the significance of this, and, and the reason why there's a kind of long written section in, in the documentation, is that uh, joints uh, typically make for two frames we're attached to uh, have a kind of location that they're, they're both at, if, unless the joint has a degree of freedom of translation, like a free joint. And what this is saying is that uh, this weld joint is going to weld these two frames together, and these two frames are offset frames from something else. So we have a weld joint that's connected to an offset frame for ground, uh, and it's also connected to an offset frame for the pendulum base. And uh, these offset frames can have the offsets independently changed uh, so that we can start moving things relative to each other. So although the joint requires two things to be co-located with a, with a weld joint specifically, uh, these two offset frames that have been added allow us to move things in the scene um, and again, this uh, the, the reason why we have to move things this way is because of the way that OpenSim works and the way that things are attached to each other. Uh, what's effectively happening here is that uh, one side of a joint is connected to the ground via this offset frame, and the other side of a joint is connected to the body we've just added via this other offset frame. And uh, what that means is if we want to move uh, um, pendulum base in the scene, 
we go over to one of these offset frames. In this case, it's going to be the uh, ground offset. And then we can change values of, we can change the offset value for this frame. So I can change the offset value of this ground offset frame to be plus one in Y. And what that does is it says that this frame, which must be at the joint center, uh, must also be one away from the thing it's attached to, one in Y, uh, which is ground, right? So that's effectively moved this frame up plus one in Y from ground, and let's put our cube here up in kind of the air. Uh, okay. So that's that's how we move things uh, in OpenSim, uh, and it's a it's a side effect of the fact that we're dealing with an, an interconnected model kind of graph. So, uh, what's the next step? Okay, we need to next now that we've added this cube, we need to start adding the next body, which is the pendulum head. This is the body that's going to swing on that cube, and the way that we do that is again we go down here, we add another new body. Uh, this body is going to be called pendulum head. And this one is attached to the pendulum base, so attached to the ceiling we've just added, effectively. And it's not going to be attached to a weld joint. We want to give it one rotational degree of freedom, which is a, what a pin joint does. And I'm going to call this pin joint uh, pendulum head to pendulum base. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to add those offset frames again so I can freely move ahead uh, with respect to the joint center. And I'm going to give it a sphere geometry. And I'm going to click add. Now, uh, as you can see, the, the sphere is kind of buried inside the body right now. The reason why uh, that is, in, inside the cube rather, that's decorated in the, bo the body. The reason why that is, is because, again, um, we've just added this, this body, but we've also added this pin joint, uh, pendulum head to pendulum base. Uh, and at the moment, uh, that pin joint is directly attached to the pendulum base and directly attached to the head with no offsets. So it's effectively co-located these two bodies. Now, again, if we, if we want to move um, the pendulum head relative to this disjoint center, we have to think about how these two offset frames need to be manipulated. So this time around, uh, what we're going to do is change a pendulum head offset. And what that's saying is that uh, this joint center is going to be here, right? Because it's zero from the base, so it must. It, we're not going to change a base offset. So, that, so the joint center is going to end up here, same as as for the bases. And what we'd like is for um, the head to be offset from that location, right? So if I change a pendulum head offset here to zero point two five, you can see that it's moved. Uh, actually, let me just double check the documentation here. I moved it to zero point five in the in the tutorial, you can see if, if I change the offset of pendulum head offset uh, to 0 0.5, it's moved down, uh, which is a little bit counterintuitive. But the, the reason that's happening is because you can think of it as this is the offset from the pendulum head, right? So the pendulum head body, which is decorated with the sphere, is down here. And we're saying that the pendulum offset frame, which is this little offset frame you can see in the UI here, must be 0 0.5 in y above that body which has the effect of moving the body down because um, the body's location is determined by all of its joints right so this body is attached to this pin joint which is attached to the base which is attached to ground is how we're, de we're determining where this body is we have to think about things in terms of uh, how they're joined to each other and yeah so uh, that's how we kind of move things relative to each other. Uh, you have to keep in mind how things are connected and, and their relative offsets. So, uh, and, and I promise it becomes more familiar as you do it more often. So yeah, what we have now is a, we have our, our pendulum base cube and our pendulum head sphere. Uh, uh, this is attached to that with a pin joint, so it can freely swing on that peep print that pin joint. Um, now, if I hit simulate up here or press Control R to do the same, you see that nothing really happens, and the, re and the reason why is because the pendulum head is perfectly kind of vertically aligned with a pin joint. There's no reason for it to swing under gravity. And uh, the next thing we're going to do uh, is again, this is still section uh, 1.4 in the tutorial. We're going to uh, swing the head a little bit, and the way that we do this in tutorial one is that we go over to joint sets. We go over to pendulum head to pendulum base, which is our pin joint. Uh, and then we go to RZ, 
which is a coordinate that controls one of the, the joint's degrees of freedom, in this case, kind of the, the rotational coordinate. And then we change the default value to one radian. And, and, and you can see that because uh, we've set the joint to have a one radian rotation, it's automatically, because this thing is attached via that joint, it's rotated, it had the effect of rotating the head by one radian. And, and now if you swing, if you start a simulation, you can see that, yeah, it's swinging in space, uh, exactly like a pendulum would. And uh, yeah, so um, effectively you're done at this point in terms of making a pendulum. Uh, it doesn't quite look like a pendulum yet, but you have everything you need, right? You have some 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 body uh, with some mass attached to something else uh, on a on a joint that it can swing on. In this case, a, a pin joint, and uh, it kind of ticks all the boxes of a pendulum. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, which is a uh, section one point five in a tutorial, is is make it look a bit nicer. So uh, the way that we do that is, uh, oh, let's have a look at what what makes it look not so nice right now. So. Uh, the ceiling doesn't really look like a ceiling, right? It's a cube. Uh, and, and this pendulum head uh, is a little bit too big compared to that cube. So the first thing we do is we click on this cube and we, we rescale some of its edges a bit. So if you click on the cube and you go down to the properties editor here, you'll find something called half lengths. And I'm going to change the half lengths to 0 0.2 to make it a bit wider, uh, 0 0.01 in Y to make it a bit thinner, and then 0 0.2 to make it a bit deeper. And you can see that now it's got a kind of a ceiling. It's looking a bit more like a ceiling, right? And then if we click on a sphere here, uh, we just make the sphere a bit big, a bit smaller by clicking a sphere, going down to radius here, and changing it to 0 0.05. Okay. So now, now this, physically, this is the same, right? It's, it's the same body is attached to the same joints. All we're doing here is we're just changing uh, the scale factors of some of some jet decorative geometry. But if we simulate it, it's still going to behave the same way. Uh, just to just to make that clear. Um, the next thing we want to do is uh, this this sphere is obviously kind of floating in space right now. So what we'd like to do is attach um, some kind of uh, strut here to make it actually look like a pendulum. And, and the way that we do it is we have to think about what we want that strut to be attached to. Um, the strut's going to swing whenever this swings. So it kind of makes sense to put the strut attached to this is, is the first line of reasoning here. So if you click on, uh, you try and click on this body, you might have to, it might be better to click on the sphere and then use this hierarchy navigator here to go and select the body. Uh, we can attach things directly to this body, and the way we do that is that if you go here on the contextual actions for the body, there's an add offset frame action. If you click that, and let me just open hierarchy viewer, you can see that we've got our pendulum head, and we've just added something called pendulum head offset frame, which is this frame that's highlighted in the 3D viewer. If we now uh, trans go down to the properties editor again and translate that 0 0.25 in Y, you can see that it's moved this frame up here, uh, and the 0 0.25 here is relative to this body's Y, not to the global scene Y or anything. And uh, what this has done is effectively just moved a frame between uh, the base and the sphere because they're 0 0.5 apart from each other. And now if you simulate that, I mean, that's just what, what that's done is just effectively added a frame between those two things. Uh, but the, the advantage of adding that frame is that you can attach geometry to the frame. So now if I click on the frame, uh, which is the decoration for this offset frame, and I go up one step to the physical offset frame. Uh, there's another contextual action on the left here, which is add geometry, which is just decorating that frame of extra geometry. So if I click that, and I go to generate a geometry, and then cylinder. This is going to add a cylinder to that frame, uh, and now the last step is to rescale that cylinder. So uh, if I click the cylinder, I can, it, it's obviously a bit too fat right now. When I go to the uh, properties editor, uh, I can make the radius a bit lower. So what do I do in the tutorial here? It's 0 0.01, right? And then uh, the height is, it, it's not long enough. So again, that needs to be 0 0.25, half heights. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now we've added a, a, a piece of geometry between the head and the base. And yeah, if we simulate that, it looks a lot more like a pendulum. Okay, so then we're, we're really kind of done now, right? So we have a we have a pendulum and it's fully skinned up and it looks like a pendulum. So uh, yeah, that's that's essentially it. Uh, 
Now, in terms of uh, ac extra exercises, I mean, I, I would recommend maybe if, if you want to try the extra exercise yourself, you stop the video now and you convince yourself to, that you can do the extra exercises, but I'll, I'll spend the rest of this video just going over them uh, for you. So um, one thing I pointed out uh, in section 1.6 of the extra exercises is to make a double pendulum. Uh, and this is just the same steps as before, but instead of attaching this body to the base, you're going to attach the new body to this body. So the way you do that is you add a body. Uh, I'm going to call it like a pendulum head two. And instead of attaching it to ground or base, you attach it to the last pendulum head with a pin joint uh, and a sphere. Uh, and then this is going to add another body here. Uh, again, you go over to the joint uh, set here. Uh, the joint I just added was defaulted to have a name of pin joint. And I'm going to shape, make it so that this head two offset is 0.5. Right, so this is going to mean that this frame, just joint center, has to be 0.5 above this body we just added. And, and now we've got our double pendulum. Right, so if I, if I simulate this. You can see that okay, yep, yeah, it's a it's a double pendulum. And if you want to change the strut length and so on, you can change like the distance of those offset frames, but okay. And then just to finish this off, if you want to skin it up, it's it's the same process all over again. Oh god, what was this radius? It was 0 0.05. Right. Uh, and then again you can add an offset frame, so you can click here. Add an offset frame that is 0 0.25 above. Uh, add some geometry for that offset frame. A cylinder that has uh, a half height of 0 0.35 and a radius of 0 0.0, I think. Let's have a look at what the radius was. It was 0 0.01. Okay, and there you go. That's a fully skinned up double pendulum. I went a bit faster there, but it, uh, hopefully you can see it was basically the same steps. Um, another thing you can do is open this in the OpenSim GUI. So uh, if I save this to my desktop, I'll overwrite my last attempt at this tutorial. Uh, and then if I open OpenSim 4.2, is it? And I open it in OpenSim. Hopefully it's all fine. Yeah, so now you have a double pendulum that you can simulate in OpenSim. Uh, and that should be all okay. And just as a little video only bonus, uh, this isn't in the tutorial, but it's something that's nice to know uh, if you haven't used this UI much yet, is that you can now plot outputs from this model. So a, a nice little exercise for kind of uh, university classes and, and, and so on is to see if, it, see, if, see if you can prove a pendulum equation using a simulator. So the way that you do that is, for example, you could right click something in the scene request outputs, and then you can get the angular acceleration, right? And then you could also get the angular velocity. And if you plot that and open that in the outputs tab, you can see that they're kind of opposite to each other. It's a little bit wonky here because it's a double pendulum, but if you had, if it was a single pendulum, it should basically give you a sine wave. And you can see, but you can kind of see that, yeah, when the, when the acceleration is low, the velocity is high, which is what you'd expect for a pendulum. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, uh, that uh, that's, should be enough. Uh, hopefully that was clear enough about the content in tutorial one. I hope you found us useful. And uh, if you uh, would like to keep uh, learning the skills of, of how to use the OSIM editor to build these kinds of models, tutorial two is going to be uh, very similar content, but uh, slightly more in depth. It's building a model that's a bit more complicated. It contains collision surfaces and coordinate limiters and constraints and so on. So yeah, I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video uh, and uh, I hope this was helpful.